Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. And what I'm gonna do right now is edit photos from a recent five minute portrait that I did over at the Fro Factory with the Nikon D5, 70 to 200, 2.8 VR2, and a 600 millimeter F4. Yeah, I broke that out just for fun. So let me set it up for you. If you wanna check out that five minute portrait, you can click over here to check it out. It's about 11 minutes long for a five minute portrait. But what I was doing was just going out to shoot. I wanted to shoot something, so I set up a camera, I set up the GoPro so you could watch everything happen, and now I wanna go ahead and edit the images. So from the shoot, I'm gonna show you all of the pictures that I took. So it looks like there are 64. Now you see 64 of 135. The reason you see 135 is because I actually did two shoots with two different people. So this is for the first shoot, which is the five minute portrait. Now you can check out all of the raw files, or not all of the raw files, you can download some of the raw files over on the website as well as all of the full res exported JPEG. So here we go. The first thing I wanna do inside of Lightroom is I wanna select all the files to go ahead and rename them. On the Mac, function F2 brings up this renaming box. I go in here. I'm gonna set the date, which was yesterday, 2016-04-02, underscore, we'll call it five minute portrait D5, all right? We'll call it that, and then I do another underscore, and I could do, well, it's only 100 pictures or 64 pictures, so I'm, I'm gonna leave it at this, hit done, go ahead and do this, good to go. Another quick tip that I have for you anyway out of here is you go under library, previews, and I create one-to-one -one previews for all of these files. So when I click on it and I zoom in, it doesn't have to load. So what is happening with those one-to-one -one previews is that you're building up this full res preview so that when you zoom in, it doesn't have to go ahead and uh, use the computer to process it. You've already built those previews. Now I have it set where after 30 days, the previews go away because that's gonna chew up a lot of space on your computer if you keep doing previews of everything and you never get rid of them. So. With shots like these, which I was out there just shooting for fun, playing with the D5, the whole point of going out and, and using something is not shooting Coke cans in the corner, it's about doing some kind of portraits. Now, you can see all the, 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 the five minute portrait over on the site to check it out for yourself. All right, it's time to edit. And being that a lot of these may be similar, we could use the sync functions. Uh, go here into develop module. Do a little bit of contrast, even contrasters in. This is over at the Fro Factory, guys. Lots of windows, you can see. Now these windows are, are getting replaced with storefront style windows, so you'll have a different type of catch light in the eyes in the future, but I'm still doing frosted glass. The reason I'm doing frosted glass is because it softens the light coming in. Plus I don't need people seeing in, and I actually don't need to see out. We just shot with the daylight that was coming in. This is my buddy Adam Rosenberg. Nice tight, what were we at? 5,000 ISO, 200 millimeters. You can see this eyes nice and, look at that, nice catch light in the eyes. Just trying to get the color to where I want it. Don't want it too cold. Don't forget, we could also do black and white. Black and whites may work out pretty well against this brick wall. So being that these two images were taken right after each other, I go ahead and hit sync. Uh, I could hit check all, but we don't need local adjustments on. Lens correction, we could leave that. Effects, yeah, go ahead and do that. So that means that the next one is going to be the same in terms of editing because it's the same files, taken at the same exact everything. So you can sync those. That's going to save you some time. Boom. I had Adam drop his head slightly because if you look at this, you have the reflection in his glasses and see when he dropped his head, the reflection is gone. Also, the exposure is a little better here. 1 3 20th of a second at 3200 ISO. I dropped it uh, from the basically, well, it's not a full stop, but it went from 5000 to 3200. Nice shot. I love the tone. Yeah. We could always go black and white too, but let's do, let's do both. Okay, what do we have here? Tone curve, medium. I just like this thicker. You probably don't edit women like this. Well, also don't do this. Don't be this guy. I always say that. And don't be this. Oh, it's so glowy. Uncle Rico. Yeah, looks good. 
Nice. That looks good. That looks really good. I'm really happy with that one. You know what? I'm happy with it. I'm giving it a five star. I'm also going to rate it, give it red by hitting number six. Snapshots. I go ahead and do this. Watch color. I want it to be black and white after. Switch it to black and white. I'm going to edit this a little different because I go a little thicker with the black and whites. You can see what the highlights do as you pull them down. I don't want to pull them down too much. There we go. And then I can hit black and white as a snapshot. It gives me the two options, color. Oh, black and white, color, black and white. Oh, God, that's great. Um, let's see what these exposures were, 1 3 20th of a second, uh, 1 500th, because the light was changing. So I can just sync these two if I want it to be black and white. They're very similar. They, you know, with the D5, you shoot 12 frames a second. You try to shoot one, and it's snapping off multiples. So we got that. I could leave this one color because the other one's pretty similar. But I love seeing the color of the tattoos and everything pop out as well. Hmm. We'll keep moving. We could sync it. Let's see what happens if we do sync this one to the last one. Obviously, the exposure is off because I changed every. I changed the uh, shutter speed there. You can see what happens when you over contrast with color. Look, I am a big fan of over contrast. And I will tell you that my boomification goes all the way back to uh, high school when we would use a three and a half to four filter. Zero filter, neutral gray or 18% gray or whatever zero was. Negative filters, even less blacks and whites, more grays. Filters uh, three, four, three plus, whatever, three and a half, four, those are extreme contrast. I would boomify there. I wanted my blacks black and my whites white, and that's what I did. Even back then, in high school. Just trying to pull back here, let's see. The factory's nice to shoot. There's a lot of different, ah, that looks great. We could, again, I mean, black and white looks good, too. Go ahead, just color. Well, sync it with the next one because it's very similar, taken probably at the same time. Go like that. Yeah, it's very similar. We can make, ah, but the color, looks, the color actually looks nice here. So does the black and white. I just tightened it up. I like to tighten it up, personal preference. Oh, let's, let's see what other people like doing these days. Mmm, grain. Adding frame, adding grain. Let's make the grain rain. Let's make it rain grain. I do not want to add grain. The whole point of shooting like this is to shoot clean, in my opinion. Shoot clean. Okay, how far in are we? All right, let's keep moving. 400 of a second, 2.8. I'm going to go back to the color one. Let's sync a bunch of these. I'm going to unselect that one because I don't want to sync that. Sync, oh, God. You can see how far off when you sync. This is why like presets and sync and everything doesn't exactly work all the time. Because don't forget the light's changing. When the light changes, the color changes. So I'm going to go ahead here, and I'm going to select them. I'm going to reset them. Actually, I need to reset each of them? I guess so. What I'll do is I'll edit the first one, and then sync that one. There's a lot of red in here. I'll show you what we can do to remove some of that other than just the tint. And I'm gonna introduce more as I bump the contrast into his eyes. He must have been tired. All right. And here. We'll stick with the color for this one. Look, guys, it takes time to edit. Hope you enjoy. Hope you get that it does take time. I don't want to rush through this. I want you to see what I actually do when I sit here. And that's why I just give you the opportunity to watch this and also play with the files yourself so that you can go ahead and edit a file from the D5 or files from the D5. Now I can go ahead and sync these. One four hundredth of a second. 
Yeah, they're all very similar. These are not the winning shots, I can tell you. I like this one more than I like something like these, for whatever reason. All right, let's keep moving through. 200 millimeter, not a great shot. But we'll edit it for you anyway. I'm not done yet, so don't, don't, don't criticize it yet. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I did, I brought up the shadows in the, in the shirt only to crush them more by going stronger. But I like doing, I like that. See, that's where it started, that's where we're at currently. Mm -hmm. I get guitar face. Do you guys get, you know what guitar face is? When guitar players are playing, they're like, meh. I get, I get editing face. I'm like, uh, uh, looks good. All right, similar picture. We'll go ahead and sync that. Again, that's multiple frames where the, where the Nikon is shooting. Rapid fire. I forgot to show you something, right? I talked about showing you the, the removing some of this red. There, see? Ooh. You can play with these sliders and pull it out. It's not even that bad. Minus 33, yeah, I mean, just a little bit. You can pull just a little bit out. Mm, interesting composition here. You can see the lack of color, but I'm going to pump it right there with the, uh, with my uh, white balance. Get the shadows in here a little bit. No, I don't want the highlights on this one. Nice. That's at one five hundredth of a second. This is also at one five hundredth of a second. Let's see if they sync together to save us a little bit of time. Nice. Nice. I, li I like that. We'll sync a couple of these. And then you can go in and individually tweak each one. That's the thing. Obviously not a keeper. Whatever. He was laughing. Could make one of these black and white. There was guitar face going again. Don't forget you can change the white balance. That does change your tones a little bit. You can also come in here, you can see this for black and white editing. You can see that you can still go into the the black and white sliders and remove certain colors that you don't want there. Like those bags under the eyes, a little bit. All right, let's keep moving through. I'll probably go back and tweak these a little more after we're done doing this. 500th of a second, 2.8. Looks like we have the same thing going. Boom, let's go that again. We'll sync it over. Just a little too, it, it's feeling red and thick. I could feel that. I know, and then I pump it up. The difference is, I like to go kind of, oh, see, that doesn't look bad either. It's not bad. I actually like the color feel this time. Now, the color feel, I could, cha I could change my mind later, you know, tomorrow. I may change my mind, too, with the color that I liked. 500th of a second, same thing. So I can sync these also. Gives me a starting point but the color is way off on those. Too yellow. See, that looks good. I like the color feel on this. Now I could see that this was uh, 3,500. You make match it. You could, you could sync your, uh, your white balances just like that. Then we broke out a 600 millimeter F4 indoors. Obviously the exposure was way off on that. Black and white. 
black and white could work. Exposure's way off, but we're bringing it back. Bringing it back to tighten it up. That happens when you, uh, you just gotta get your exposure right. You should get your exposure right in three shots. I say that all the time. Remember, don't make multiple changes. If it's too bright, either change one thing or the other. It's all cause and effect. If this exposure was bad at one five hundredth of a second, then the then your better exposure is right here at, let's see, one six fortieth of a second. I also made multiple changes because I kind of did. But like I say, change one thing at a time, at a time, and build your exposure from there. Meaning, if it's too dark, what do you do? Do you change your bump your ISO or do you lower your shutter speed? In this case, with a 600 millimeter f/4 on a monopod using VR, I don't really I, you shouldn't be going less than 600 millimeters. It's one of those rule of thumbs. You don't want to go below 600 millimeters. Sorry, you don't want to go below 600. I'm doing multiple things at once. You don't want to go b below 600th of a second. And not, not the best photos, skipping them. I don't like these photos either. I just don't like that look. It's the bald head, probably. See this one? Too much breathing, like I didn't leave enough breathing room on here. His head should have been more on this side. And then I think I got it right with this. But remember, this is a big ass lens and it is rocky and shaky because it is huge. Beautiful lens though. Just warming it up. See how that changes the image from cold? Just warming it up a little bit. We'll stick with the color this time because I am warming it up. It's thick. That is really thick. We could always, hold on, didn't mean to do that. We could always pull back on the contrast, of course. Just, I'll split the difference. And because these are all about the same, boom like this, one five hundredth of a second. Uh, I went to 10,000 ISO on this. It, it, the ISOs are insane here. Let me just remind you that when I'm shooting stuff like this, I'm not trying to push the camera to the extremes on purpose. I am just shooting with what I think would work to get the exposure right, to give me the right shutter speed, and so happens to be that I went from 8,000 to 10,000 ISO. Now you don't have to think that much with it with the D5 because you could just go there and not worry about it. I could print this the size of a freaking billboard and nobody would be the w none the wiser. I like the black and white. I do like the color too. I'm gonna go black and white on this one. I actually don't want it that thick this time. We'll go with that. Don't like this, see how the head? Just a little bit right here, and then a little movement, cut it off, don't like it. Now I wanna make this thicker. I'm going back, I want it to be thicker. Keep moving. I know I'm coming up on 20 minute mark, that's where this stops recording. I just, uh, I'll, I'll keep going. I'll keep going just for you guys. Yeah, <laughs> that head thing. Keep moving, a little too dark. Why did it change? Oh, the light must have dropped inside. That does happen. I know, if I'm bringing out all the, we'll call them perfections in Adam's face when I do that. Very similar. Sinking again. Yeah. Look at this. This again, that's not. Ah, I'm focused on the glasses, the rim of the glasses this time with the 600 millimeter. I missed. And because I missed, this would not be a usable shot. Some people would still use it, but I'm all, my focus is off, so it's not usable to me. But we'll edit it nonetheless. It either missed because I see I was in continu I was in single focus, and he may have moved, and I didn't relock in, or I was moving when shooting. There's nothing you can do to fix. You can't over sharpen. Look, you can't over sharpen using clarity to make it you know to make it sharp again. It's not going to happen. This just you can't fix out of focus. Lytro tried and failed. Missed the focus again. 
I missed. Well, my only eyebrow at F4, you're compressing so much at 600 millimeters that I missed. Hopefully I didn't miss all of them. Go ahead, let's sync this. Let's get some general starting point. Oy, that color is horrible. That color is a little better. There we go. Brought the color back, but this photo is terrible. Terrible, Jared. And what did I do? I don't know what I did. I screwed up something. I think we got some sharpness here now. You can see it. Yeah. Now I got the sharpness right, but this, this composition is weird. I don't know that I like it. It's just weird. Don't forget, 600 millimeters is not your typical portrait lens, especially indoors. But what I love is that I can get a headshot in my, in my building doing a 600 millimeter, not even shooting it long ways, which means we've got, ah, oh yeah, it's coming back. It's interesting. I don't know, I don't know if I like this. Do you guys like this composition or not? Let me know. I like it in color this time. Oh, but I like it in black and white too. Damn it. See, and then I started to move the composition. We can sync all these in a minute, but I do probably want to try this in black and white as well. Snapshot so I can come back later. We'll call it color. Maybe we'll go black and white. I'll make the next one black and white. How about that? We'll sync those. Actually, we'll sync all of them with the color. And then I can go in and individually tweak if I need to. This is good. Yeah. See, see, bad, yeah. That composition, you see I corrected myself in the next couple, I gave him more room. Started over here, then settled in. We'll have to check out the five minute portrait to see how I did that, but you can see how I'm changing the composition time and time again. I think it's this one, by the way. There's just the way that it's not this one because of the ear, or is it this one because of this space? See, I look at all this stuff. You got some skin sticking in here, and on this one you don't have skin. But which one feels, the one with the skin feels more natural to me. That's getting a six flag, because I like it. Not six flags great adventure, because they don't let me in with my shirt on. Which means I'm not allowed to be in there without a shirt on either. They don't let you in with I shoot raw. Nice. We're gonna go with that. And this one, not so much. Oh, and that one's better too. We'll make you black in the white. All right, now we got into the horizontals at 600 millimeters. And I got my focus right. It's crazy how when you warm it up just a little bit, it makes it much better of an image. I'm not saying it's a great image, I'm just saying it makes it, like, when you start here, it's like, eh, but then you pull it back and it warms, it's more inviting. Again, torn between the color and the black and white. These are all about the same, so I'll end up syncing them in a second. 4500, there we go, just a little bit. You don't want to be pukey and you don't want to be that color. No, I don't want to go too far with the white, but back to zero. And I don't like doing too much with the highlights. We can split the difference. You guys can go in there and clean up the eyes if you really, really want to clean up the eyes. Just because you sync it doesn't mean that the image is right. Remember that the lighting can change. Oh, nice. Just gonna move through these a little quicker. Again, the one-to-one -one previews make it easy so I can zoom in like this and just have it look good. Uh, I can't tell, I think it's close. Watch this again. 
So a little bit of warmth brings the image right to life. Oh, there's a lot of people, guys, that do this. Don't be the saturation person with people. It just doesn't, it doesn't resonate, it doesn't really work. But with inanimate objects, it's a totally different story. With people, not so much. Nice. We can sync the next couple, because they all look to have the same exposure. Probably taken at rapid fire succession, which means this is a good opportunity to make one black and white and one color. Check and focus. This is thick. I think this is one of the good ones. Just there's some there's some feel about it in the eyes. It just looks better. Again, oh, I'm back with the seventy to two hundred this time. I liked it much better than the 600. How's the black and white look here? Luckily, we've got two similar shots. The next one. Nice. Let's go ahead and sync that. We'll sync the next couple. Again, they look the same or very similar. So I can make this one black and white. Oh, yeah. I like editing on the, uh, the iMac, the 27 inch. I go ahead and hit F, it gives me the full screen, by the way. Get back out of that. I wanna put these next to each other. I highlight them both and I hit N and it gives me that. I hit the tab key and it brings it up more full screen. God, the black and white speaks to me. It's so much thicker. Maybe I should make the, uh, that one thicker too. Double click to get back in, give me my tab, coming back to this image, back to the develop module. Yeah, I'm gonna tighten you up, Adam. I don't care, I don't care at all. I mean, I care, but I don't mind the, the perfections. We'll call them perfections. There we go, it's synced, oh yeah! That looks great. Actually, I like this one a little more. You can see the light change. I like, I just, this is too more, too much in the center. And this one just falls in the right place, gives me a red star. Let's see if we should pull out some of the, look, watch what happens to the brick. Oh, Jared, that looks good. Okay. Now I need to go back. See this orange of the brick? Pull them back slightly, makes that image so much better. So much better. Oh, that's good. See, that's taken at 1 400th, 1 400th again. So let's take the one that we really like right here, and let's go ahead, I'm using Command on the Mac, and I'm gonna sync these up. Should get it pretty close, like I said. And this is just the first pass, guys. You were just seeing the first pass. Many times I'll come back the next day or at, at night and do a second pass just because lighting and just the way that you feel it changes throughout your eyes, they change. What you like right now, you may not like later. Like I may like the color now, but I may not like it later. Don't want any blown out areas. I can make one of these black and white just for fun. For whatever reason, black and white allows me to punch it up even more. So there's all those. We could go through here in the library, start back at the beginning and just see the progression and we'll call the best images the best images. I could also go back here and 
go through and do the second pass. Well, if we have that good in color, we should like it in black and white too. See, I like that. Well, what did we choose here? Ah, the smiley shot. Just want to clean up one thing. You know me with taking out imperfections. I don't do this often, but there we go. Just a quick clean up right there. Nice. Oi. See, you see how weird that color looks for whatever reason? For whatever reason, that color doesn't look good. Looks John, no, it doesn't look John to see. It just looks something. I can't put my finger on it. There's some good images here. Just going through. I'll do another pass after, just so I could take a closer look at it. Obviously didn't like these images, kept moving. Why did I pick this one? This one's, no, oh, which one's better? Ear, no ear. Ear, Van Gogh, Van Gogh. All right, no ear. No ear feels better. I mean, it would hurt, but it feels better. Yeah, look at that. That right there, look at that. I love that one. That one I love. A lot of what we had to do during that five minute portrait was watch out for the glare in the eyes, and it, sorry, glare in the glasses, and there, by bringing his chin down slightly, I was able to get rid of the glare in the glasses just by directing him to do that. So if you wanna download these full res exported JPEGs and look at them, you can do that over on the website. You can also download the raw files, not all of them. I'm gonna supply you with what I think are the best ones so you can try it out for yourself in Lightroom. Go ahead and download that so you can play with them inside of Lightroom CC, which is what I'm using personally right here. So you wanna check out that five minute portrait? Go ahead and check that out as well. You can see the full shoot. I believe it's an 11 minute, five minute portrait, something along those lines. But I wanted to go out and test out the D5 in a real situation. Adam wanted some portraits. I asked him if he wanted some portraits. He said, sure. He came out, used a 78200 2.8, used a 600 millimeter F4, tried to do some teaching while doing some shooting. We have 8,000 ISO, we have 32,000, we have 3,200 ISO, all the way up to 10,000 ISO with this. Like I said, my concern was getting good portraits, not to sit there and say, what does 81,275 look like? Because I actually already did that to get a different exposure, a different, a different shot. So we'll leave it at that. Thank you guys for watching. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.